What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about linear searching an array in C Sharp. And this is probably the easiest search algorithm that you're ever going to use. It's incredibly real world. If uh, this is not something that you're just gonna be doing just for the fun of learning, like you will use a linear search in a production environment. I can almost like bet like, I'd bet like a hundred, literally, I would bet a hundred thousand dollars you'll use a linear search in your programming career at one point. And I'm not, there's no guarantee, but you get the picture. Linear search, I call it the human search. This, a linear search would be if exactly how you would search something as a human. So in computer terms, first we would make a for loop. So let me see here. So we just go, you know, first we would just make a for loop and we would just iterate through it. And just like a human, we're just gonna go through each one. So a human is just gonna go one, is it, okay. And you're going to search for, let's say, we're gonna search for six. So we're gonna go one, nope, not here, that's not there. Two, th no, not there. Three, not there. Four, not there. Oh, here's the six. Oh, here we go. Six, we return true. And that's going to be, the actual looking through each one is going to be the for loop and the actual checking is going to be an if statement. So the actual picking it up, looking at it, being like, is this a six? That's the if. The for loop is the actual you going to each one. So one, two, three. And then the if is going to be, I'm checking, you know, what is actually in there. And makes does it make sense now? It's gonna make sense when we actually get in get into it and we actually start building this. So obviously being that we actually need an array to look at, we're going to go in here, we're going to actually create this array, just create like a dummy array. And you can literally populate, you could populate it with strings if you want to, you could populate it with integers, objects, that's a topic for another day. But if you want, if you're feeling a little crazy and you're feeling like an algorithm master, we, we could do some objects one day, not in this video, because this is kind of aimed at beginners and we don't want to freak people out. Then we go eight, we go nine and we're just going to have this array of this many values right here. And we're just going to initialize it. You could create a for loop to do all of this for you, but I think sometimes it's easier in cases like this to actually um, just initialize them with the values already inside there. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna call this a function. Then we're going to pass in an int array. And then we want to pass in a key and a key is a fancy word for, and I'm actually going to comment this, key, key means what value you are searching. We're, we're searching an, a searching algorithm. So we're, we need an actual value to pass into this algorithm to actually um, look, to, we, need to, we need to actually search for something. If there's no key, we're not actually searching for something. Let's just you know describe it that way. So key means va what value, we are searching for okay and we are returning a bool we're returning a bool you could return a negative one you could return an int you could return a console log you could do any of these but i think in this case we're as uh, searches we are and i forgot that r a search is true or false and i think that that's it you know what you're going to see out there in the wild so to speak so all we're gonna do here is we're gonna create an i, and we're gonna go zero. We're gonna go i array dot length. So this array is gonna get passed down here, um, a pr like the most basic for loop we could possibly have. We're like I said, we're just like a human. We're just gonna go through each one, one, two, and we don't need any special type of array or anything. And then, as I mentioned in the visual, this, and I'll show you, if, and I'll break this down here in a second, and really show you what's going on it's going to return true and then this is going to be an array this is actually going to be the array that we pass down we're going to pass in true so go here and if this whole entire the reason that we put a false on the outside is because if this whole entire loop runs and we don't have a value that means there's nothing in there and we're going to return false and Let's go here and we're just gonna do a console write line. So we'll go console.write line. We're gonna go linear search and we're gonna pass in an array and IntelSense is awesome. And you may be wondering, well, why did you put 
this why did you put this in a console right line and i actually made this i made this goof a, like a long time ago i would just have this on the outside like that and it would never display anything and i'd be like well why is my program not displaying anything because you have to wrap it in a console log otherwise it's not going to display anything in the console so we're going to go here and let's go ahead and going to see let's execute this thing we're going to go through it step by step and i'm going to show you every single part and also we're going to blow away these these watches and we're going to create our own watches and that's always a good thing that i always tell people create watches in visual studio or whatever ide that you're in and it will save you a lot of headache because you can actually see what's going on and let's see then we're going to go we're going to put a watch on this length and it doesn't exist yet so we're getting an error then we're going to put a watch on this key so add a watch then for just for shits and giggles we're going to add a watch to this eye and we're just going to just watch what happens so we've already created so it went through we've created our array it's initialized that array and you can see all the values in that array in memory and i need to go through that one more time because i need to step into it so what you want to do is when this arrow gets to the console log you want to step into because you actually want to go into this function and i actually just made that mistake so it's going to initialize our i that we're going to have our array dot length and if you notice there it didn't actually run that increment because for some reason and i don't really know like why that's true it knows not to increment it the first time it only knows to increment it on the second one how it does that, I don't really know, but you can watch it in real time as we kind of go along. So we go array, then it's going to go within our array and look at the I, and the I is zero. So where is the I going to go? It's going to go inside here and it's going to check for the key. The key is zero. Is this array zero, like look at look right here, if you ever just get confused, you can be like, oh, where am I at? So I'm at I and this is zero. And then in here, this is zero. So we're at one. Is key equal to, let me see here, equal to zero? No. So it's gonna run again. And it's not gonna be true. And then it's gonna increment it. It's gonna go through, it's gonna check it again. It's gonna go through array. Is array one, and we check here, is one equal to key, which is going to be zero? Is that value equal to our key? And it's gonna go through no it's going to go through again it's going to check it's going to actually do the increment and you notice here it's not this has already been assigned how this is ha happening in a comp underneath and in the compiler to be honest with you i really don't know but if you know how that all that's working i would love to know because it's a very um that's a question i, I think of all the time because i'm stepping through for loops like all the time so as you can imagine it's just going to go through each and every single one it does not find it should not find it and we're let's see what value we're at nine right now and then it should step through the array dot length is equal to 10 it's going to step through it's going to be false and there's no value in there so we've got false right here but let's change our key to match something that actually works and let's change it to a four and let's see what actually happens when we execute it so we're going to go in we're going to go down. It's going to initialize our, our array. We want to step into this linear function. If a function is wrapped within a console right line, you need to press step into at the console right line or it's not going to work. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to step into and let's see where we're at. We're at, we're at one right now in the array and it's supposed to go through the length of the whole entire array, which is 10. So checking, checking, and boom, we've got a true. And you can see here three is three equal to, what's the key? So we go into our third one, that is number four. The key that we passed into the linear search is number four, and we're going to return true, and it returns true. Very simple algorithm, very real world. I highly recommend that you learn it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.